Hello, this is Jacob Barnett, and I'm here with part two of my lecture on, well, tutorial, on Rorty's Estelon form and gas Jordan elimination, and how to solve a matrix. Now, first of all, I'd just like to clear up everything on elementary row operations. These are, in a sense, like superpowers. Without these, it's like Superman without his cape. These are each very important. Um, I'm just going to make these a special symbol. I'm going to make this one like a lightning bolt or something. And then I'm just going to give this guy a swirly wind. And then I'm just going to give that guy like a little fire thing. Or I can't really draw it that well. Anyway, so I'm just trying to get to the point that these are extremely important for what we're going to do. Now, for use of this first one, I shall take a matrix. And I'll have the matrix be 1, 0, 5, 1, I don't know, let's say 5, 10. No, 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 5 too big. 4, 10. Okay, so now what I can do, I can subtract off 5 times this row into this row. So I can then have 5 times 0 is still 0, subtracting it off, 1, 0. So then this row remains the same. And then the top row, I subtract off 5 times the lower row. So 5 times 1 is 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. That's why I chose 5, because I want that guy to be a 0, and we're getting it into row-reduced echelon form, as I have right here. These elementary row operations are to get the matrix into row-reduced echelon form. And then, subtracting off 5 times 4 from 10, that's 5 times 4 is 20, um, 10 minus 20 is negative 10. So then, if we put, this is the same thing as saying x equals negative 10, and y equals 4. That's the entire reason why we're going into row reduced echelon form, is because now we have a solution for x and y. Okay? So now for switching rows. Let's say I have this exact same matrix, only I have 0, 1, 1, 0 for negative 10. Now, I could use my next superpower to switch them. Switch the rows. I can really do that. Now, adding, I mean, multiplying any row by a constant. Now, let's say instead of this, I have the matrix 1, 0, negative 10, but instead now I have 0, 1 half, and 2. Now, usually when we're dealing with matrix, we want to avoid fractions at all costs. So I am just going to multiply that row by a 2 to get rid of the fraction. And we get back to the matrix that we have gotten all again and again. 0, 1, negative 10, 4. Okay? So this is how we do the elementary row operations. So last time, we, I had written this matrix to simply, let's see, um, describe how to use a matrix. Now I want to solve it for x and y. Now solving this system, what I'm first going to do, to get a 1 in this entry right here, I'm going to subtract off 2 times this row in here. So then, um, I'm going to erase this bigger guy. <laughs> Which superpower was that that you were going to use? Uh, um, the first one, the lightning bolt thing. Oh my gosh, I think there. Subtracting off two times above it. This coincidentally is a zero. And then the next one, subtracting off two times four, that's an eight, make this a negative one. Now I can subtract off two times this one from the next row. Again, using the exact same principle. This ends up being zero, one, zero, uh, three, negative three, negative three. And then subtracting off two times negative one, that makes that a six, negative one. Okay? It's as easy as pi. Well, except for if you try to make it a pecan pie, I mean, that's, that'd be hard. Okay, so next, what I can do, I can multiply this row by a constant. Now, I'm going to divide it by 3. Dividing by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 third. So I can also divide by a constant. I should have probably wrote that on there. So now, I get 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. Now we need to use the second superpower, or the last superpower I haven't used yet. 
to switch this row to the top to get to where all these decimal form. This equals one, zero, negative one, zero, one, two. And so out of this, I get x equals two, I mean x equals negative one, sorry, and y equals two. I can plug this back into the original equations and prove that this works. Like, for example, I have negative two plus six equals four. That's true. The next one, I have negative five plus 12 equals seven. Also true. So this method actually works and it is very useful when solving this. This is the basic concepts of linear algebra and that's how to use them. You can eventually use them on larger matrices such as um, zero, one, three, four, zero, uh, five, six, seven. I'm just gonna take that matrix and do we have enough time on the video? Um, you've got a few more minutes. All right, so just make it sure. Um, okay. So I can solve this matrix in the exact same manner. However, I can, I can also do this for any number of matrices. I'm just gonna choose that one. So then this is the same thing as using superpower number one on both of these rows. Yay, lightning bolt. <laughs> I have a zero there, a four there, since that's just a zero, and a negative three here. And here is a zero, a six, and a two. This is the same thing as, I'm gonna divide this row by two, subtract two times it from there. Oh no, I'm just gonna subtract it. Using the first power again, and I'm also using the third power when I'm dividing. Ooh, lightning bolt and fire. Using your superpowers makes these scary numbers more fun to me. Three, one. Subtracting it, I get negative four, one. Now I can use this to cancel out what's um, below here. This is the same thing as, I'm sorry, I'm having to get really close to here. One, zero, one. Zero, one, negative four. Zero, zero. Let's see, negative 4 times negative 3, that becomes a 13 right there. Okay, so now I have this matrix right here. We're not done yet. Um, now, I am actually not really... I forgot to actually put a solution set onto this. I'm putting mm -hmm. this in a row-reduced echelon form. So this is an example of putting a matrix in a row-reduced echelon form. Should have probably chosen an easier one. So then I got this. Now I can divide this row by 13 using number three. Now, I can add in four times this row to here and subtract off four and one times this from here. And then this eventually becomes one zero 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 one zero 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 one. Exactly what we could expect. Another case of a row just echelon form, believe it or not, could actually be this. of where the solution is a line. And then I can eventually solve for this. I have, I can call ZT and I can solve for this. Um, if I call ZT, I get the equation X equals seven minus T, I mean minus five times T, and Y equals eight minus six T. And then Z equals T. For those of you who know a bit of calculus, you should be able to know that this can simplify into, actually you don't really need calculus for this, but it's mentioned in calculus. Minus five, this equals uh, y minus eight over negative six, which equals z. Very simply, okay? So that's all I have, and if you need to, you can review these videos again. Um, these are going to be very important when dealing with the concept of matrices and the rest of linear algebra. Thank you for watching. I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Luke and whichever of his friends he may be watching. Thank you for watching again. Goodbye.